Thank you. I want us to start our calendar new year in these in this program by really recognizing the mystery and the beauty of this desire for a deeper life, for a true life, for an awakened life. It doesn't appear for everyone and for people <clears throat> to whom it doesn't appear, it appears strange and odd. But everyone here on this call in this meeting has somehow had this mysterious quickening, maybe when you were young, maybe just recently, this desire, Papaji calls it the desire that ends all desires, because all other desires are somehow offshoots of this desire for the truth, for completion, for self-recognition for living a life in the direct knowing of who you are, of what is true, of what is eternally here, and what is radiant in its eternity and mysterious and uncatchable by our thoughts. Our thoughts are never separate from that. They arise from that. They will attempt to catch it as they are made to catch objects <clears throat> and store these objects or catch ob objects and get rid of objects. But this that is calling you is the way home <laughs> in your willingness to recognize you have been blessed or you have been lucky or you just randomly, undeservably have been called home to recognize that and honor the call, honor it by attending it, by not pushing it over with some idea of inconvenience or later or when I have time, by the recognition of the enormous grace that has arisen for you in your lifetime and the capacity you have and that we all have in gathering together to support yourself, to support others in discovering the, the answer to the call. <clears throat> I re remember being with Papaji and people would come and just be floored by the simplicity and the depth of this invitation. And perhaps they would engage in a conversation with him, a question that he would deal with very distinctly for that person. And you could see there would just be this opening, this radiance, this recognition and peace and sometimes ecstasy and bliss, but always under all the emotions, a, a peaceful recognition of, of rest. And then quite often that person or another person who would, who would experience the same thing, but not quite so publicly, would just leave. They would say, okay, I, I've got to get out of here. I have an appointment or I have to go, or maybe, I, maybe next I'll go to Rajasthan and that'll be really great. And it was astounding. And I remember saying to Papaji, how is it possible that someone can just have a true experience, an undeniable experience, and then somehow turn from that into, well, back into suffering. And in that suffering, seeking something else that will make it better for a while. How is it possible? <laughs> and I'm sure you have experienced that in your own life experience. And he said, this is the most amazing thing, and it only has come clear to me in, <clears throat> in the years since I've been away from him physically. 
He said, it's to be expected. And I said, it's to be expected. Seems like to me it would be expected that you would find home and you would never leave. He said, it's to be expected. And I realize now <clears throat> that what he's pointing to is the nature of the mind, the yeah. nature of our thoughts. And if you recognize that it is to be expected that our thoughts will try to own the truth or our thoughts will file the truth somewhere and then seek something else that is pleasurable or different, then that is a, a, a humbling, first of all. It's not expected that your mind will be falling at the feet of truth and, and open from then on. It's actually expected that your mind will try to find ways to co-opt that truth, to get around it, to objectify it. And so right with the wonder of the fact and that the desire for truth has arisen in you, in your lifetime, is also the very sobering caution that your mind will try to objectify or deny that, will use something to, to take it into a spin of suffering once again. Why is this? <clears throat> We don't even need why. It's the nature. It's the, the lila, the play of this consciousness. But when it is expected, and when you recognize it arising without judgment, it, it's expected, it's the nature of the mind, then you also have the capacity to support yourself in telling the truth. What do I want? What is my life for? What does it mean to live a deeper life, a more true life? What does it mean to be free, to be at peace, to be myself? And our gathering, is to support you <clears throat> in discovering directly, freshly, surprisingly, where the truth is in every moment. Not in every moment as some future projection of every moment that will come, every moment that is, this moment, still this moment, this moment not remembering something in the past where you honored the truth of yourself or you dishonored the truth of yourself, projecting something in the future, just being here, relaxing, taking a moment, inquiring. I greet you freshly in this. And may our conversations be fresh. And if, if, <clears throat> and certainly they will be the same words, may those words be heard freshly, uncorrupted or polluted by our past concepts. So that when we hear the word freedom, or we hear the word truth, or peace, or love, we don't hear it from the past. We hear it from what's arising within us. We are conditioned to live secondary experiences, to learn about experiences, and then to put that learning on top of what we in fact are experiencing. So I invite you to primarily experience. You don't have to make it fresh. <laughs> By its nature, it is fresh. <clears throat>